What's up, you guys? Welcome to Bloom Church Online. I'm so excited and I'm honored to have you here tuning in to join us for today's message. And just to give you a little bit of our heart here at Bloom, it's our desire to see you bloom into everything that you were created to be. We believe that you do this by first believing in Jesus and having an intimate relationship with him, belonging to a life-giving community, and then becoming the disciple that you were born and created to be. You guys, I'm really excited. I'm honored to introduce this message to you today. Pastor Tyler, is going to be talking all about expectations and what that looks like. And so I'm excited for God to move through this message. So let's go ahead and get into it for today. walking in who we were created to be, there's fulfillment, there's purpose, there's wholeness and health aligned with it. If you can learn the art of generosity and you can do it from a pure, beautiful heart, it is what flips your life upside down in the right way. When we started shifting and saying the very first thing that comes out of every single paycheck blessing I get is my tithe and my offering. God did the greatest radical change in my life. This is what the Lord allows us to keep. Faith and obedience is far more honorable than keeping up with the Joneses. Sometimes we don't know how significant of an impact our generous gifts are until later on down the road. God placed you exactly where he needed you. You are not here by an accident. God already has a picture in his mind of how much good and significance can be done when you give extravagantly. Hey, I got one announcement and then we are going to dive into what God has for us today. My one announcement, y'all, it's finally here. Tis the season. Our Christmas services start next weekend. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen in the house? Are y'all excited about Christmas? I said, can I get an amen in the house this morning? Come on. Listen, listen, the team has been working so hard on this. There's going to be special photo booths and treats and special music. You're not going to want to miss this. It's going to be so powerful. And listen, an empty seat should bother us. Amen? This is an opportunity for us to show people the real reason why we celebrate. It's the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, church, can, can you all just, can we make a commitment? Can we be inviters, not just attenders for these? Come on. You all with me? All right. All right. Well, hey, while we're in that celebrating spirit here, can you all welcome, help me welcome everyone watching online in our Bloom Church Online campus? Come on. All right. All right. Well, let's dive in. If you're new here, we just wrapped up, as you saw, we just wrapped up one of my favorite series that we do here at Bloom Church called The Blessed Life. Truly, this is, if you missed it, this is one of the most powerful, most impactful series that I believe we do here at Bloom Church. We outlined biblical principles, foundational principles about how to live a life that is blessed. And now here's the thing, if you missed any of that, it's okay, you can go back, you can go to our YouTube, you can go to our website and get caught up. Please do not miss out on this opportunity to learn how to live a life that is blessed. But as I was praying about what to teach on today, in the context of the blessed life, I kept thinking about this, this life that is blessed and I kept praying, God, what? What should I teach on? What do you want me to speak on today? And he kept bringing me back to this one word. He kept bringing me back to the word expectation. Because here's the thing. It could be really easy for us to hear about this life that's blessed, a life that is blessed, and for us to begin to paint our own picture of what we think that should look like. But did you all hear the problem in what I just said? We begin to paint the picture of what we think it should look like. Instead of us surrendering to God, what does a blessed life look like fully surrendered and trusting in you? Because here's the reality is that, that God desires for us to live a blessed life, right? Remember what it says in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. But let me ask you this morning, what happens when, when your blessed life looks different than so-and-so's blessed life? How do you respond when, when you think you should have something that is not in God's will for you to have? You think you should have that promotion. You think that your marriage should look like this. You think your family should look like this, and you don't get it. 
How do you respond? And listen, it all comes back to that one word, expectation. And how many of you all know this morning that expectations can be a tricky thing, right? Because expectations can be such a powerful thing. It's just like what we sang about. God, I know you're going to make a way. I don't know how, though, right? Because expectations, if you're taking notes, write this down. Expectations with the right heart are the breeding ground of miracles. Do you all believe that this morning? That, God, I'm going to expect you to do what you said that you would do. That's a surrendered heart. That's the, that's the right heart. But listen, the opposite is just as true. Expectations with the wrong heart are where we try to play God. You ever, you ever throw a my way or the highway ultimatum at God? Right, God, I expect you to move and I expect it to be in this way. <laughs> that never really pans out, does it? See, unhealthy expectations, they can have an effect on us spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally. Have you ever expected for something to happen and then it didn't happen? Have you ever expected for something to happen in a certain timeline and maybe it didn't happen in that timeline? And let me ask you, what did it make you feel? Right? Maybe just a couple, it probably made you feel frustrated, maybe disappointed, maybe angry. God didn't do what I wanted him to do. But listen, if we aren't careful, then we could begin to project our frustration, disappointment, and anger towards God when he doesn't meet our expectations for something he never planned for our life. And there's a story of expectation that I love in Matthew chapter 11. If you have your Bibles, you can take them out. But it picks up like this in, in verse 2. It says, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. Okay, so I want you to just, just get that really quick. John the Baptist is in prison, and he hears all of the miracles, everything that Jesus is doing. And then watch how it continues. So he, John, sent his disciples to ask Jesus, watch this, are you the Messiah we've been expecting or should we keep looking for someone else? So John the Baptist, he's in prison, and he hears about all of these miracles that Jesus is doing. But then he says this word, so. Everybody say so. So. This is the most important word in this scripture. Now, some of y'all know my story. Grammar is not my strong suit. Okay? Got kicked out of college because of an English class. It's not great. All right? But listen. Listen. Did a little research on this word, so. Do I have any English majors in here? Anybody that's, okay, come on. So I need, you, I need you to back me up on this. The word so is a coordinating conjunction. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. All right, we're tracking here. Y'all remember that song, conjunction, junction, what's your fun? All right. The word so is a coordinating conjunction, which means that what you're about to hear is based off of what you just heard. Am I good? Yeah, okay, come on. So John the Baptist, who is in prison, hears about all the things that Jesus was doing. Well, what was he doing? If you go back and look, Jesus was healing the sick. He was, he was opening blind eyes. He was unstopping deaf ears. He was performing all of these miracles. But John the Baptist hears about all of this, but he starts to question his identity. Are you the one, what, did he say, what does he say? Are you the Messiah we've been expecting or should we keep looking for someone else? What was John expecting? Right? I don't know about y'all, but I kind of think the, the miracles are, are pretty amazing things, right? But he hears about all of these things and he says, are you the guy? And we can pretty well assume that John's expectations were out of line from what Jesus was actually doing because he asked the question, right? Let me ask you today again, have you ever expected something and it just didn't turn out the way that you thought that it would turn out? Have you ever expected to, for something to be awesome and then it didn't turn out awesome? I remember I was uh, 16 years old. And again, if you know my story, I was a wannabe rock star for a while. I was a band guy. And uh, at 16 years old, there's a water park in Lake of the Ozarks called Big Surf. And the band that I was in, we were playing a, a church event at Big Surf Water Park. And so we get there early, and we're able to set up all of our stuff before the park opens. And we were extremely efficient. And so we set it up uh, with plenty of time left before the park opens. And so the manager comes by, 
And she says, you know what? There's about 30, 45 minutes until the park opens. Some of the lifeguards are already in their spots. Just, just have your way in the park. Just make it your own, right? And let me tell you, at 16 years old, we thought we had made it at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was dream come true. And I don't know about y'all. I'm a big fan of the Lazy River. But I'm an even bigger fan of a wave pool. Can I get a name in this morning? <laughs> Love a good wave pool. And so my buddies and I, we run over, we sprint, we go to the wave pool. We're like, this is so awesome. We don't have to worry about, you know, this whole tube to tube. Like, there's so much room in the wave pool. And so as we're running that way, we see all these signs around the wave pool that say, no diving, no diving, no diving. So I look at my buddy and I say, I'm going to dive. He says, you're going to dive? I said, I'm going to dive. And so sure enough, I come back, about as much room as I can get. As I come back, I look up and I see a lifeguard. He looks at me and I look at him. And he knows it's about to go down. You know what I'm saying? Like he knows, he knows. And so I get my position and man, I sprint and I'm going, I'm going, I hit him with one of these. You know what I mean? Like the form was on point. And right as soon as I leave the ground, I look down and right next to my feet were three black bold characters they were 3FT. Come on. It's going to click here in just a second. That's three feet. Your boy was 6'3", six, 6'4", six, at this time. And I was about to dive headfirst into three feet of water. Something that I thought was so awesome did not end up being so awesome. A slight concussion, a chipped elbow, and scrapes all over my body. It was not awesome. Something I expected was not great. Or how about this one? This is my little girl. This is little Miss Sailor Joe. Oh, yes. She's so sweet. She's so cute, right? But let me tell you, this little girl has an expectation with her bottle and with food. The expectation is, if you are not here with this bottle and this food sub five seconds from when I wake up, this sweet little face turns into this. How many parents out there can hear this picture, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but listen, she had an expectation, and if this expectation is not met, it, it affects everything. It affects, again, her, her mental state, her emotional state. I even think looking at that picture, maybe a spiritual state. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but listen, it's funny when we're talking about Tyler being a moron, it's funny when we're talking about this sweet little girl, but it's not funny when we're talking about your marriage. It's not funny when we're talking about your job, your purpose, your family, your kids, your parenting. I thought it would be different. I, I, I thought I would have this. I thought I would be here. I thought I would be further along in life than I am, and let me ask you the question today, what happens when you want to go one way, but God goes another? What happens when your expectations for what you want God to do are not in line with God's plan for you? What happens when your expectations are off and you try to play God in your life and you expected for God to do something for you that he never said he would do? Listen to me, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down and understand this. God may not always live up to your expectations, but he will always live up to his word. Ooh, I don't think y'all heard me this morning. God may not always live up to your expectations, but he will always live up to his word. If he said he will never leave you, he will never leave you. If he said you will, he will never forsake you, he will never forsake you. If he said that he came and sent his son to forgive you, you are forgiven. If he came and said, I came to give you a rich and satisfying life, he will give you a rich and satisfying life. It might not look the way you think it should look. It might not feel the way you think it should feel. But where are your expectations? Are you fully surrendered in him? And so today, again, I really want you taking notes today. Today, we're going to talk about three ways to have healthy expectation in this life. The first, number one, is you got to inspect your perspective. you got to inspect your perspective. Because here's what I know is perspective influences your expectation. 
right? Your attitude, the lens that you look through, your point of view have a, has a massive impact on the expectations that you hold. I want you to think about the story that we read about John the Baptist, right? Do you remember where he was in this? Let's go back to verse two. He said, well, John the baptizer was in prison. Everybody say prison. He was in prison. And I need you all to get this because this is John the Baptist. Like we're literally talking about the guy who baptized Jesus here, right? If you go back to Matthew chapter three, this should be the guy that knows all that knows who he is, that has a healthy expectation. Matthew chapter three, verse 13 says this, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but watch this, John tried to talk him out of it, saying, I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you. So right here, he clearly explains that he knows the extent of who Jesus is, right? I'm the, me baptize you, no, 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 I need to be baptized by, by you is what John is thinking. But what I want you to see in this today is that that when John is in the water of baptism and can clearly see Jesus, he doesn't question his identity. He doesn't question his mission. He doesn't question his purpose. He doesn't question who he is. But the second that his eyes are off of Jesus, he's in a prison cell. He cannot see Jesus. Is this the guy? Is this the one that we've been expecting? And how many times is that us, right? We might not be in a physical prison or or in a cell, but I don't know about y'all, but I kind of think that that the battles that we go through can sometimes feel a whole lot like we're in prison to them, right? Like how many times are we maybe at church or we in our life groups or or something holy, right? And we feel like we we know what God has for us. We feel like, like, like we can see God for who he is and what he's doing in our life. But man, the second that that temptation hits again, is this the guy? The second that, 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 that we go home and we enter into an argument with our wife and we realize our marriage is hanging on by a thread, is this, is this him? The second that we open our bank account and we realize that our finances are dwindling, is this, is this the guy? The second that we look at that family picture and we realize that this is not what I thought that I would have, is this the guy? The second that we get into that prison... And we ask ourselves, again, is this the guy? Where is your focus? Where is your perspective? What's your perspective, maybe even after God answers the prayer that you've been praying for? Maybe you had an expectation, again, of what you thought it would look like. God answers it. You thought, oh, I I thought it would be different. There's a story in Matthew chapter uh, 14 you might be familiar with this story. It was when Jesus walks on water. And there's this massive storm. The disciples are in the boat. And Peter sees him out there. And Peter says this. He said, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, then tell me to come out to you on the water. And what happened? Jesus simply said, come. And so Jesus answers Peter's request in this, right? But then after that, Scripture says this. It says, Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, and he cried out, Lord Jesus, save me. So again, Jesus answers Peter's request, and he says, yeah, come. And so Jesus, or Peter steps out on the water. And when he steps out on the water, he's able to stand firm on the water because his eyes are focused purely on Jesus. But what did the scriptures say? It says, but when he saw the wind... When the adversity hit, when his circumstances hit, he began to take his eyes off of Jesus onto his circumstances, and what happened? He began to sink. He began to sink. He began to to doubt. And I feel like that's where a lot of us get to with expectations, right? We, We pray, we pray, God, please do this. I expect for this to happen. And then he moves, and it's not in a way that we think, and we begin to doubt where God is even taking us. And here's what I know is that an unhealthy perspective will always cause you to doubt where you're going. Listen, I don't know what kind of prison you're experiencing right now. Maybe it is your finances. Maybe it is your marriage. Maybe it is your kids. Maybe, Maybe you were hurt by somebody. Maybe you were hurt by somebody in the church. 
And you have an expectation for them to reach out to you and apologize. Maybe you were hurt by somebody in the church and this is your first time back, but you're kind of, you're kind of arm's length, just kind of keeping a distance. Can I tell you today I'm sorry? If you won't hear it from them, hear it from me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you were hurt. But listen, Pastor Jeremy Foster said something that was stamped on my heart forever. He said, don't judge the heart of Jesus based off of someone that was supposed to represent them. And let me tell you today, he loves you, he cares for you, and he is so incredibly happy that you are right back here in his house worshiping his name. Amen? You got to set your expectations. You got to inspect your perspective. Number two, the second thing is you got to remember what God has done. Remember what God has done. What would your perspective look like and how would it shape your expectations if you always remembered what God had done in your life? See, in Mark chapter 4, powerful story. Again, there's a, another storm happening. But Jesus and his disciples, they're in a boat. They're crossing over the Sea of Galilee. And if you don't know anything about the Sea of Galilee, there's, this, there's this mountains all up and down the sea. And so what, what normally happens is there's this cold air that comes down the side of the mountain. It meets the hot air on top of the water. And then these big storms, they come out of nowhere. And this is exactly what's happening as the, as, as the disciples and Jesus are crossing over. Now, my man Jesus is in the back of the boat, and he's asleep, which is great. The disciples, though, they're freaking out. They're like, oh my gosh, this is, we're going to die. This is how it ends. We're going to die. And, 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 and this is me in the diving into the three feet pool, right? This is, how it, this is how it ends, right? But Jesus, the scripture goes on. Jesus wakes up. He rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Watch this. Then he asked them, this is the disciples, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And here's the thing. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Because Jesus isn't asking them, how do you still have no faith after what you just saw me do? He's not asking them, how do you still have no faith after you've seen me calm the winds and the waves? What he's saying is, how do you still have no faith after everything you've seen me do to this point? And so I got really intrigued. So I went back and I read Mark chapter 1 to Mark chapter 4. And what had these disciples seen? It was amazing. They saw miracles. They saw people being healed. They saw paralyzed walking. They saw lepers being healed. They saw all of these things. And then they saw demons even being cast out. They saw some things. And so let me just ask you today, what would it have looked like if one of the disciples, when they're all saying, oh my gosh, this is it, this is how it ends, this is how we die, if one of them just spoke up and said, no, 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 no. Guys, Jesus is in the boat. Do you remember he cast out those demons? Do you remember he fed those people? Do you remember he healed that little girl? No, 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 no. No, we're going to be fine. Jesus is in the boat. Listen to me today, church. I came to tell you that storms can be really scary, but Jesus is with us. Your prison can be really scary, but Jesus is with you. Sometimes you got to look back on what Jesus has already done in your life. I was actually just talking to a great friend this past week about the importance of remembrance and how honestly as believers, y'all, this should be a spiritual discipline in our lives, that we consistently go back and we look at what God has done in our life, what he has brought us out of, where he has taken us from and led us to. And so I want to challenge y'all today. Are y'all up for a challenge? Are y'all up for a challenge this morning? Come on. So I want to challenge you guys today. Go home and in, this week in your quiet time, I want you to get a fresh journal, a fresh piece of, piece of paper, a notebook, whatever that might be. And I want you to spend time reflecting on what God has done and I want you to write it out on a piece of paper. Everything God has done in your life, I want you to write it down on a piece of paper. And I want you to keep it in a special place. Because listen, when the storms hit, which they will, when adversity comes, when that temptation comes back up, when, that, when the reminder of where your marriage is at or your finances or your parenting, wherever, whatever hits, when that happens, I want you to go back and I want you to pull out that piece of paper because here's what I know, is that if God has been faithful to you in the past, he's going to be faithful to you in the present and in the future. If God has been faithful to you in the past, he will be faithful to you in the present and in the future. 
And so for healthy perspectives and expectation, we need to inspect our perspective. We need to remember what God has done. And lastly, number three, we need to trust that God will do it. God will do it. Again, it might not look like you think it should look. It might not feel like you think it should feel. It might not happen in the timeline that you think it should happen. But listen, again, my last point, we got to remember that if God has been faithful to you in the past, he's going to be faithful to you in the present and in the future. God's promises for your life are yes and amen. And remember what Proverbs says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your what? Your own understanding. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, I don't want a life that's based on my own understanding because God can do exceedingly more than we could ever ask or imagine. I don't want a life that's built on what I think. I want a life that's built on what he thinks. And when we do that, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. When we trust him, he works it all out. And what does Numbers say? Numbers says that God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? you got to trust that God will move, but surrender it to his will. I don't know how you'll make a way, but God, I know you will. And that is a blessed life. Listen to me today. A blessed life is not a life of earthly things. A blessed life is a life surrendered in his will. A life that fully trusts in him. There's a, uh, there's a story, there was a massive earthquake in 1988. There was a massive earthquake that, that flattened Armenia. And it killed, they say, anywhere from 30 to 50,000 people in four minutes. This picture is just a a small snapshot of the area that was affected, but the morning that this earthquake happened, there was a father that dropped his son, Armand, off at school. And the father would always tell his son, no no matter what, if you need me, I'll always be there for you. So he drops his son off, and his son goes to school, and the father goes away, and the earthquake happens. And the father was fortunate enough to survive the earthquake. And when it did happen, after the fact, he immediately rushes over to where the school once had stood. And he was met with just a pile of rubble. And there's all of these parents that are gathered around. And and can you imagine, maybe you're a parent in here today, can you imagine what that feeling would be like? To walk up and see your son or your daughter's school just completely in ruins. But he made his son a promise. And so he doesn't hesitate and he immediately jumps into action. And he goes back to the back corner of the building where he he knew his, his son's classroom was. And he begins digging. And he begins digging and digging and and these other parents they try and tell him, listen, listen, I know what you're doing, but there's no sign of life. You got to stop. Just, just give up. Just go home. Just start the grieving process. But again, he knew he made his son a promise. So he continues digging and digging. The fire chief comes up to him and tells him, you got to go. There's fires and explosions everywhere because of gas lines. It's not safe for you to be here. The police chief tries to pull him off, but he keeps digging. 12 hours, 24 hours, 36 hours go by. On the 38th hour, he removes this big rock and he's yelling, Armand, Armand. All of a sudden, he hears a faint little whisper, Daddy, it's me. And so he goes, he asks for help and help comes and they begin throwing these rocks off and throwing and throwing and throwing and he's yelling, Armand, Armand, hold on. I'm coming, I'm coming. He's throwing these rocks, and all of a sudden he reveals this, or he pulls off this one rock which reveals that his son Armand and a handful of their friends were in this protected enclosure. And he looks at him and he says, Daddy, I knew that you would come. And I told my friends that if you're still here, that you would be here because you made me a promise that you would always be there if I need you. 
Listen to me today. That boy trusted that his father would come. That boy trusted that his father would do whatever it took to come and save him. He had an expectation. It might not have happened in the timeline, right? It took 38 hours for this to happen. But there was, a, there was trust. And can I tell you today that you have a heavenly father that will never stop digging, that will never stop searching after you just like that, that father with that boy. Listen, he will keep digging through your mess. He will keep digging through that pile of rubble. He doesn't care what, 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 what failure you came in here with. He just wants you to trust in him. He wants you to surrender to him because here's what I know is that God can overcome your failure if you have faith. God can overcome your failure if you trust in him. But listen to me today, that all starts with one action. None of this makes sense if you're not fully surrendered to him. None of this makes sense. You will not be able to live in his will if you are not in relationship with him. And listen to me, like I just said, I don't don't know what you came in here with. I don't know what sin you came in here carrying, but listen to me. There is no too far gone for our God. And we don't ever want to end a service, end an experience without you being able to make that conscious decision to step into a relationship with him. So no moving around. This is the most important thing that we do. I'd love for you to just bow your heads, close your eyes. I want you to place your hand over your heart as a symbol of your soul and listen to me today. We say this all the time. Grace was never meant to be hard. It was just meant to be chosen. And you can choose him today. Come on, he's running after you. And so I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe your blood washes away all my sins. Come be a part of my life. Today, I commit my life to you. I am chosen. I am loved. I am forgiven. And I matter. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would flood the hearts and the minds of every single person in this room. I pray that any shame, any condemnation leave in the name of Jesus. And you remind them, Father, that you have made them for more, God. That they are truly forgiven. That who the Son sets free is free indeed. And listen to me. If you made that commitment today, if you gave your heart to Jesus for the first time, or maybe you've had a relationship with Jesus, but you strayed away from the path and you're, you're rededicating your life to Jesus. If either of those were you, I'm gonna ask you to do something really big and really bold in just a second. In just a second, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. And you might say, Pastor Tyler, why would you do that? Let me tell you, it's for two reasons. The first reason, let me tell you, I want that visual. I wanna see you raising your hand because I wanna be praying for you in this new journey of yours. You're not alone in this. But the second reason is this is your time. This is your time to tell that devil that he's got no hold on you. This is your time to tell that sin that it does not determine where you are going. This is your time to run back to your heavenly father that has been waiting with arms wide open just for you. So on the count of three, I want you to be bold. I want you to be courageous about this because we're going to celebrate. One, no looking around. Two, if that's you today, life change starts today. Come on. And three, if that was you in this place, raise your hand. I see 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 your hand. Anybody? I see your hand over here. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? I see your hand over here. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Come on, church. Can we get excited? Come on. Oh, we can do better than that. Come on. We got new family in the building this morning. Amen. Come on. Amen. Listen to me. If you made that decision today, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, I am so proud of you. But more importantly, most importantly, our God is so proud of you. And I know that this is just the beginning for what he wants to do in and through your life. And Thank you for watching. And if you gave your heart to Jesus, can I tell you right now, I am so excited for you. And this church wants to be in your corner. We actually want to resource you so you can grow in your faith. So if you text the number below, we actually want to send you a free digital copy of the book, Following Jesus. It's going to help answer some questions you may have and give you some next steps you need to take to grow in your relationship with Jesus. 
Again, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed today's message, will you give me a favor? Will you like this video? Comment below, maybe share it with a friend. And don't forget, we go live every single Sunday. And until next time, pray God's peace.